people in cuts and names, to meet the Amali, which you can't get to what you can't get, doesn't like it. It's spoken in the about it. So, we are also here to establish a good working relationship. The council is a good business. This council is a visa for the government meetings, the service wins, and the visa with 10 one and with other companies. As I was saying, in a different way, in a different way, in a different way. So, back to a meeting here to basically to find out how converting out is leading to cost saving for all our city council with the delegation, a very serious delegation from BCC and we appreciate the knowledge the other town table is leading in delegation say among our pool. We hope to get answers uh, and information. You know, we are living in Asian area where we are flooded with information by the staff of knowledge. So I'm hoping this will present a, a, an opportunity for us. We also need Singapore University out of thinking to also find out the measures that can be taken to put in place uh, to make sure that terms and conditions of contract are followed by subcontracted companies. We have uh, encountered the scenario of what we call the agent opportunity, where some contracted companies, uh, because they have been more knowledge on the subject than cancer, they tend to manipulate. And we know our companies are out there, our money are going to make money. Our resources are under, our money is So, as you guys said, that, as I'm going to cut my cost, because the information, the knowledge, how that can be uh, solved. Even say, the manipulator, the process. To also help residents and stakeholders come to grips with procurement act and procurement processes. From our understanding, the procurement process and act is open to various interpretations. It appears there is many interpretations as there are people themselves. I'm also not a But we also have hope that is as you see, sir, in the key tenants and provisions. And where residents can be accorded a permanent space in the bargaining table. We also do not like to read about these tenders. Okay, they might be so cancel the uh, And in the process, we are hoping to have the capacity and the knowledge to be able to analyze local government contracts. Uh, at the end of the day, we want to produce some research around the procurement. We have already embarked on that research. It's not looking at how I open. This meeting is as I with our partners. In Lantry, Masuingo, in Utari, and other residents' associations, among our Konesua Kapasteta. So, we are hoping to produce a model of alternative policy guidance in terms of how procurement uh, can be enhanced and replied among serious <coughs> leverage changes. We were reading last week, uh, earlier this week, uh, about Chiret. Uh, who budget go to the develop something like 10 million to purchase a transformer? And then the minister sends someone to find out a kind of a transformer 10 million, but all about it costs only 10,000. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, in our name, I think we have who's our discussion. I think it was just who's going to give a, a, a brief background in terms of some of the key highlights and the issues. Uh, that we want to continue to focus on. We know in area in procurement and private contracting is very broad, but we want to zero it and narrow it down to the uh, other issues that sit at the core of our survival as residents of Kulao. Uh, without the skin of being unpopular with this serious house, let me end. As I was researching for this uh, discussion, I just uh, open my desktop at work uh, in Kainela, a few stories I've done regarding our tenders. And it was shocking that um, ever since I was a, a cup reporter in around about 2009, I've written close to 50 stories regarding our tenders and cancel or even more. Now, as I start this um, debate, um, I would like to quote our town clerk, the Honorable Ubabu Udule in one of our publications in October 2018. He said, uh, local businesses were failing to come up with competitive tenders, which leads to them losing out to Harare-based firms. And I'll quote, open quote. We're a local 
authority. And we should also, as much as possible, try and protect our local business people. Because if we don't do that, we will have businesses that benefit from other local authorities. But however, let me also indicate to you that tenders, by their very nature, are competitive. You will just have to compete and win. The biggest problem that our business people, when I say our, I mean from this part of the region, when it comes to tendering, their tenders are, they are very poor. Close quarter. The topic goes on to say they will consider a policy of segregation preference where they give preference to our companies, meaning to say they will be forced to take our companies even if they don't meet the regulations and tax. And then I go on and quote our worship, the mayor, Ubaba Uncle. Again, it was in November 2018. He says, BCC will award all tenders to companies operating within its jurisdiction. The local authority will consider putting a deliberate policy of awarding tenders to local companies as a way of keeping deindustrialization. Was this just top shop? Was it politicization? I don't know. But then, is it all about the companies? Is it all about the local authority? Are the companies if we award these companies the tenders, are they fulfilling their jurisdiction? I'll quote the senior public relations officer, Council, Umama She says, over 8.5 million US dollars in unfinished projects have been lost. Our companies now they run away from their projects. They are given tenders, they don't finish their tenders. In this case, I'm talking of developers. When she was quoted, she was saying there were 22 projects on both council and private land left without critical services like water, sewer, and red road uh, uh, connectivity. Are we shooting ourselves in the foot as the cover private companies? And then we blame council for not awarding us the tenders. Now, over the past year, 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 couple of years, there's been talk of new procurement reg uh, regulations. There's been talk of unsolicited bids. One issue which our town clerk has been so vocal about. A couple of weeks ago, as I was reading the newspaper, I came across an advert for the um, parking management system tender. This has been a tender which has taken close to nine years. I first wrote of this story when I was a student. Still, the tender has not been awarded. What's happening? Is the Fagunmaru Zobona syndrome there? <laughs> Our company is really serious about tendering. Do we meet the capacity which is required by the city council? As we go forward, I hope and pray all these questions will be answered today. Thank you. I think mine is just to get the ball rolling, it's just to uh, I think uh, the previous speaker just uh, uh, maybe uh, got in people to have some anxieties uh, going up. So uh, I'm trying to lower everyone down to say uh, let's start on a fresh page by maybe playing a neutral role. Right? My uh, presentation topic is uh, contracting out as a modality for delivering services. Right? Um, I'll start by uh, giving a bit of some detail on uh, contracting out as a concept where I'll give a general overview and also go to uh, a brief history in this Zimbabwe case and also try to define see what is it by the way as it is defined by uh, various scholars. Remember, I'm, I'm an academic uh, more often than not of the theory to what has been said by others and also uh, followed by looking at the rationale of uh, contracting out then uh, next to that, I will go to the operational considerations in contracting out, then go to uh, pros and cons of uh, contracting out. Uh, in the uh, rundown of the issues that I'm going to talk about, I'll be referring to some uh, specific cases upon which we draw uh, some lessons. Um, I'll try to be very fast, my presentation is quite long. Uh, on the general overview, uh, 
in my uh, rural of literature, I learned uh, that contracting out is not a new uh, concept, which simply means uh, many local authorities, especially in the industrialized world, have actually uh, made use of that uh, avenue in uh, delivering uh, their own services. The concept is emerging as a common policy issue in a number of developing countries as well, of which Zimbabwe is included. And uh, literature also points out to the fact that uh, the concept seems to be a pragmatic response to budgetary uh, problems. I think uh, those who are with uh, Willow City Council will try and give me a much practical uh, explanation or input to that uh, generalization that it helps reduce uh, costs in uh, delivering of services. Um, so to continue with the general overview, the quest for service by all communities together with the call for equity and quality service delivery has exacerbated the call for a drastic action, uh, which means uh, contracting out now comes in as, a, as, a, as, a, as one of the drastic actions. It actually holds a potential of increasing economic efficiency, uh, as I've already uh, said. So resources are likely, if you were my students, I would say under, underlying likely, resources are likely to be allocated more efficiently and contracted out services hold the potential, and I would also say underlying potential, for improved value and efficiency. When I was saying, uh, may you please underline um, like and potential, it simply means it may be how this contracting out is done by certain local authorities. So that simply means this is a contextualized uh, arrangement of service delivery, uh, where literature is saying uh, there isn't maybe one model which gives a, a definite answer to our service delivery. It means Zimbabwe may apply it in a certain way, South Africa may apply, apply it also in a certain way. Output is likely to be produced more cheaply out of a more market-oriented and more motivated arrangement. I think uh, this uh, takes uh, a cue from the fact that if we're talking about the market, we know that there is competition and also the competitors are most likely uh, to uh, do their best in order to uh, be amongst the best. The theoretical case for contracting out suggests many advantages in combining public finance with public uh, provisions, which has given to uh, the triple P's um, or the BOOT or the BOOT arrangement, which I'm going to talk about uh, as we proceed. And then uh, let me go to contracting out in Zimbabwe, and I'll just give a brief history. Um, the government of Zimbabwe introduced this concept in 19, 1998 with the aim to attract investors uh, into infrastructure projects and uh, state-owned enterprises which were widely seen as a drag to the fiscal, that is according to Massimo C. Uh, 2014. Um, he argues that uh, the idea of contracting out came in or just gained uh, much attention by the government around 1998 when it wanted to uh, revamp the likes of uh, uh, NRZ. So um, contracting out was introduced under the Triple P's framework, that is uh, public-private partnerships, I think we are all aware of that. Under the framework, which is the Triple P's, the private sector was to inject one technology. This is the expectation or the generalized expectation. Then number two, capital. And number three, human capital into either local authorities or the state-owned enterprises, while the government would concentrate on infrastructure provision, which is the central government. Um, however, there's been a low uptake and uh, progress of uh, triple P's from the private sector in some state-owned enterprises according to Massimo 2014. Likewise, in Zimbabwe, contracting out is increasingly recommended as a way of improving, improving efficiency in service provision. And uh, as I was preparing this, I said I need to be uh, listening attentively to the local authority itself 
to try and uh, confirm whether this really is true. Since uh, those who have written, who have researched about these concepts, have said that uh, there seems to be much advantages than disadvantages. So we want to hear it from those smart. However, empirical evidence regarding its effectiveness in this respect is almost completely absent, whereby I'm challenging researchers and academics to say we may have to have the much evaluative uh, researches which try and unlock such unanswered questions, especially on the practicality and uh, feasibility of that uh, concept of contracting out. Uh, we have heard of so many projects, and I would like maybe to, to um, uh, thank the media uh, personnel. I think they have tried and uh, written something quite uh, often about uh, some of these things, but then we have said, let, let, let there be maybe academic researches uh, which are going to give maybe a, a bit of some detail about these processes, especially the evaluative or the appraisal of uh, given projects and maybe the reasons why they are behaving in certain uh, ways. Then I will also define uh, contracting out. There are many definitions of contracting out, yet there is one common denominator that is uh, that uh, of uh, private sector undertaking services on government's behalf, according to a white paper on privatization and deregulation in the Republic of South Africa, 1987. So when I'm referring to government, also the local government is included. Uh, and B, uh, to notice the fact that the public sector must, however, remain responsible for the services that the taxpayer continues to, to pay. Whereby, if council issues a statement and say, we should do it, did not uh, finish the project, uh, the, should I say the underpinning theories are saying it is BCC or city of Harare or city of Quero that is accountable to that unfinished, uh, unfinished uh, uh, project. Um, again, the Commonwealth Secretariat 1994 has the following to say about uh, conducting out. I'll read this word for it. Under this type of management, a private sector contractor assumes responsibility under a contract. So that also says there is an issue of a contract that is to be drawn between the private player and uh, the municipality. Um, under a contract for providing a specified level and quality, a specified level of a service and also a defined quality of that particular service. Meaning to say whoever is uh, part of that panel in the crafting of uh, the, 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 the contract must be aware of the required qualities and standards uh, to that service. Um, and they're doing this, sorry, um, under a contract for providing specified level and quality of public services for a fee, right? The main objective is to obtain the most cost-effective delivery of the service and competitive, and competitive tendering is normally used. The service has, has to be monitored during the contract period. I will also underline monitored to say who is the right person to monitor that a particular uh, service delivery process. If it's uh, the municipality, who exactly within the municipality? Is it a trained uh, person or should I say a qualified uh, personnel uh, as far as uh, that particular project is concerned? Or is just a manager or is the council, full council that has to be uh, asking questions and getting answers pertaining to that particular project? Um, also, in the definition of uh, conducting out, came out the issue of um, flexibility and uh, con context specificity, whereby uh, contract, the moment that we talk about, uh, the moment we talk about uh, contracts, it means uh, there is that flexibility, which is maybe uh, according to a particular setting, political, political economic setting. And then another scholar called the Stocks, Stocks N, 1990, he or she actually identifies three main forms of contracting out. Number one, contracting out specific public services through the, the, the competitive tendering processes, e.g. maybe uh, street cleaning. Number two, the management contracts, where we are talking about the introduction of private sector management into a business owned uh, by the local authority. And then the third one is the build own operate scheme, BOOT. Normally it's common in government uh, projects. But then I think for today's uh, meeting, we are looking at the first type 
which is that of contracting out the specific public services. Then let's go to the rationale for contracting out. Try and justify and find out what is, what is it that makes us continue going the route of uh, conducting out uh, maybe in the, in the context of some of the problems that are being met or uh, dissatisfactions that actually are being pointed out by uh, stakeholders about uh, this uh, uh, method or model of service delivery. Right in the rationale, there is a broad general acceptance that that the uh, private sector is capable of delivering a better, motivated, cheaper, and more effective service in many areas. I think this is just a popular belief. And uh, once it is a popular belief, it means um, quite a lot has been said. Uh, the, the, the private players have been uh, uh, commended or recommended uh, with that justification to say they have been known for being um, better when it comes to our service delivery. In addition, main government and municipal authorities have been engaged in business based of outdated concepts. This is according to slot P1998. He says uh, local authorities and government uh, go via the, uh, the contracting out route just because they've been blamed for going for the outdated methods and, uh, and, and, and concepts in delivering services Hence, they do the outsourcing of such. Uh, with reference to the United Kingdom's experience, Moore 1992 listed the following reasons for contracting out. Number one, improved performance and more efficient use of resources. I think uh, it is self-explanatory. Number two, government's resumption of its proper regulatory function. If it's a uh, council uh, from a company perspective, I will say the development control Role. It means will our council then, once they contract out, they are able to get full time or enough time to do uh, the development control um, function or the regulatory function rather than them being uh, the, the service providers on the ground, right? Also, the other, another, another point under the justification is the insufficient scale to justify in-house supply, where we are saying a local government may find it too, too little work in a particular area to justify owning specialized equipment or employing specialized uh, staff. If it's a small project, why do we need to go out of way and uh, send uh, local authority staff uh, to get trained maybe in India, to get trained in China and lose a huge sums of uh, money instead of maybe getting uh, helps? A, a private person, a private company to come and uh, play that uh, role. Uh, hence, we save money that way. Or also, why would we go for uh, maybe purchasing uh, maybe very expensive uh, equipment and technology when we can just uh, uh, conduct out to, to Econet, which I mean, which, which is already equipped in terms of uh, uh, the, the, the equipment, the materials, and also the personnel. Uh, another. Um, Point. The next point, highly competitive conditions in the private sector uh, provide for this justification of uh, the contracting out. And uh, if there is a long-term uh, excess capacity or vigorous competition for business, there may be a good opportunity to take advantage of uh, low prices. Another justification, there is improvement in service productivity where we say local authorities can now measure the productivity of their in-house employees against that of the contracted uh, employees. According to uh, Pairi 1991, its, gener its general advantages are enormous, that of uh, contracting out. Let's go to the operational considerations in contracting out. What are the... Um, or should I say, what should be the guiding principles for contracting out? Uh, before seeking for outsourcing, municipalities should be clear on the guiding principles. Right? Um, first and foremost, we're looking at the, the municipality responsibilities. 
The engagement of the private sector in um, service provision does not relieve the municipality of its does not relieve the municipality of of responsibility for for service provision. I think I also indicated earlier on that it remains accountable to those projects that we see which may be having problems in terms of quality, in terms of a uh, lack of a, which are not completed, so to speak. And also another uh, principle here, service providers must be accountable to the people saved, of which uh, I hope we will get maybe some presentation from uh, the service providers themselves, to say how do they view or how do they, should I say in quotation marks, uh, take the, 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 the people who are their final consumers of uh, services they are actually uh, delivering. Therefore, we are simply saying uh, mechanisms that enhance accountability to the end user must be developed. And uh, we we'll also hear from the uh, municipality to say what if they put in place to try and uh, ensure that such mechanisms are in place. Um, another principle it says service providers must adhere to sound environmental uh, principles. The services need to be provided in a manner that does not cause the degradation of the environment. Uh, here we talk of the EIA procedures, uh, that's uh, environmental impact uh, assessment procedure that is provided for in the EMA Act. Another point, we talking about procedures for engagement of the private sector must be transparent. I think this uh, everyone would actually uh, want to hear how has transparency been met. Uh, by transparency, we are looking at clear steps, right? We are also looking at uh, a process whereby stakeholders should be aware of what is being done, how and why. Uh, that simply means there has to be uh, established tender procedures which actually uh, are clear and transparent. And I've said that transparency is a function of clarity and uh, predictability. I've got four minutes, uh, let me try and rush. Thank you very much for that one. Uh, also, I look at competitiveness as uh, a guiding principle. Competitiveness, where there is competition, we expect that quality will rise uh, just because the players will try and uh, improve on their way of doing things. And then the other principle is performance of service providers is to be monitored. This one, I think, is critical. We were simply saying, uh, whoever is monitoring, are they equipped enough to try and uh, police or ensure that uh, the, the principles and standards and quality is met by the service provider. Um, providers, service providers must also be responsive to the needs and pro pro uh, problems of the customers. Uh, I think this one I've already talked about. Let's go to the pros, which are the, are the advantages of uh, this um, uh, method, the contracting out uh, model. Number one, it can be cost effective if there is true competition and also prudent uh, procurement procedures and qualifi qualified supervision. Number two, it gives a local authority uh, more flexibility to cope with seasonal variations. Remember, a local authority is run by a council. At times, uh, issues are seasonal. When they are supposed to be focusing on some other things, this business of service provision must not be uh, compromised. It may also reduce local authorities' management burden and training of personnel, in-house personnel, and also newer equipment and ideas are brought into uh, the municipality's business. Uh, better infrastructure solutions than uh, any, sorry, let me repeat this one. Better infrastructure solutions than the one which is initially wholly private or public, because this is much of a combination of ideas by the local authority and the, the, the private player. And also uh, faster project completion and uh, reduced uh, delays on infrastructure projects by uh, including the time to completion as a measure of performance. But then we'll hear whether we do have the time to completion uh, mechanism as a measure of performance. Another advantage, a private partner can serve as a check against unrealistic government promises or expectations. Uh, remember we've said uh, some, they are politicians, especially the council, uh, the councillors themselves. We're talking about uh, realistic uh, promises and, and expectations, so they actually, uh, uh, the, 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 the conducting out actually uh, tries to, uh, or this model tries to play that role, become a checklist. 
sorry, check against such. Then the other advantage are the operational and project execution risks are transferred from the government to the private part part participants. And also, let's go to the, uh, the calls, the disadvantages. Um, relatively small number of bidders might mean less competition and thus less cost effectiveness. Sorry, uh, cost effective uh, partnering. Another point managing the conducting out process requires skills and experience. I think this one has to be a key point. It may not be cost effective if local contracting industry is not competitive. If it's not competitive, perhaps we will see uh, this model not working. Uh, it demands qualified preparation of tender documents and uh, close and qualified supervision. It may um, displease residents and consequently meet resistance, especially if there are many gray areas in the processes around this contracting out. Um, it does not provide hands-on experience to the in-house personnel of uh, BCC in this instance. Um, it may also stimulate fraud and corruption in the procurement process, and acceptance of low bids may lead to inferior uh, quality of work. Right. Um, and then in the case of some uh, problems which are arising as a result of uh, this uh, contracting out model, which may have failed to work, or which uh, perhaps is known to also be having some problems, uh, in the process of uh, drafting a contract, that is where I think uh, provisions are supposed to be included, which will uh, guard against such malpractices and uh, uh, challenges, uh, especially if somebody uh, uh, runs away without finishing uh, a project. Right? Uh, on this one, um, I'll just give a rundown of the penal provisions in a contract in the case of uh, Puebla in uh, Mexico, 1998. Right? Uh, here, uh, this is just a summary of how they've tried to curb problems that are actually associated with this conducting out model. Number, uh, point number one, due to delays on tasks, 20% base charge and a third additional charge if the task was finished under one to three uh, months delay depending on the service type. Number two, if a service, sorry, if, if a failure by the contractor caused the collecting efficiency to be reduced, the contractor pays 5% of the equivalent amount that was not collected. And then number three, if a task is not completed, the contractor is fined 5% of the total amount. Number four, if the contractor refuses to undertake a, speci a specific contract annex as a whole, he or she pays 10% of the total corresponding value. So this is some of the, 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 the lessons that we may draw from other uh, countries. And then um, I think as a way of concluding, uh, we should uh, uh, get to understand that uh, this model has more advantages compared to the disadvantages, the demerits. However, it is um, the prerogative of the local authority to try and make sure that it works well. It actually is implemented in a way that would see less complaints from the stakeholders who are the residents in this instance. And also, we should ask or note that uh, the local authority remains accountable for those services, even if it is contracted out to uh, Mr. Dewey and Sons or any other uh, company. So it all lies in the drawing up of the contract. We were saying uh, experienced experts must be involved in the, in the, in the process of uh, drawing contracts. However, in the legal processes, the time we are together and we are deliberating on the contract, uh, tomorrow a problem arises and uh, some lawyers come and interpret differently some are closes, then the problem begins. There is a loser and a winner always in such processes. So it needs experts to be involved in those processes. Um, also, the contracts are supposed to be comprehensive and explicit in terms of uh, uh, the explanations and the clauses. So uh, we are concluding by saying poor contracts often lead to failures. So uh, the introspection now is where exactly did we go wrong? If ever the conducting out uh, arrangement has not been working for us as City of Flower, where exactly did we go wrong and uh, how exactly can we actually keep that? Uh, I think I'm um, ending here and I will be glad to be listening from the floor. As I was uh, preparing this, 
there were quite a lot of uh, uh, questions which were coming into my uh, mind and I was like, this needs a, an evidence-based research, should I say a pragmatic uh, presentation from uh, those, an experience-based uh, kind of presentation from those who are involved and uh, we hear how they tackle or they help some of these principles that I've actually presented on. Thank you very much.